When I first started this channel, I never imagined I would do as many pillow reviews as I've done. So why not do one more? Today I've got a weird pillow that's actually filled with water. This one was viewer recommended, so, so today I'm checking out the water pillow by Metaflow. And I think that's exactly what it is. It's a pillow filled with water. But now this one, even though I haven't opened it yet, just in the packaging alone, it feels like a regular pillow. So uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with the water. Now, when I was a kid back in the 70s, Everybody seemed to have water beds back then. I never really wanted one because it kind of felt weird to me. But this seems a little bit different because it's there's padding around the edges. I don't know. I like weird products and this seems pretty weird to me. Let's crack it open. Got so many pillows. Now I do have a favorite pillow of all the ones I've reviewed over the years and that's the Beauty Rest that I did in late 2019. Let me see if this one can give it a run for its money. There's been a lot of contenders out there. Oh, we've got some pretty extensive instructions. Look at all that, wow. Okay, it feels like one side has a material that you would not want to put your head on. This feels kind of plasticky. This side feels like you put your head there. You would think that a pillow filled with water would actually keep cool all night long. Every pillow I've tried that, that says it can keep cool doesn't after a few minutes. But maybe this might be a little bit different because you would think, right? I don't know. So what I'm gonna do now is read these instructions over and then start filling and tonight the first test. I didn't read over the instructions. The first two is basically take off the cap and insert the funnel into this plug right here. That should be easy enough. Okay, step one already done. We're on a roll here. Now, by the way, they did say to put it on a chair for step three. Look at that picture. What is that? I don't even see a chair in that picture. It took me a minute to realize that's actually the pillow and a pitcher pouring water, but I don't see a chair in step three. I do see a chair in step four, although I'm not step four yet. So this is kind of how they're showing the pillow, so that's what I'm gonna do. Now on the filling chart, I decided I'm gonna go with medium, which is three liters of water. I tend to like softer pillows, but I wanna start with medium, and also I wanna see what it's like to, to dump water out of here. So I'll start with medium the first night, and I'll go down to soft on the second night if I don't like it. So the best container I have with the measurements on it is from this Ninja blender, which is a great blender, by the way. So let me fill it up and see if I don't spill water all the place. Oh, I'm filling it. Oh, this is gonna take a minute. And this is only two liters. I'm putting three liters in here, so I gotta go back and refill it. I'm filling my pillow with water. That's two liters, let me go grab another one. All right, perfect, three liters. The next couple steps, steps are a little bit strange. They're talking about pushing down on the pillow to find where the water level's at, pushing the air out. And while continuing to put pressure on there, you put the cap on. That's what I'm seeing. All right, well, that's kind of what they're showing. They actually use the word sloshing around. If they hear, if you're here sloshing around, you gotta redo this step. Okay, I'm pushing it. I feel the water level. Now, while continuing to hold it, put the cap on. That's what I understand it to be. Oh, wow, it's like it is, it is moving around. Is moving around and sloshing around the same thing? I'm not, I'm not really sure. Give my first impression this before I sleep on this tonight. Ugh. Okay, here we go. First test of the water pillow. First impressions. If I do this, I hear water sloshing around like they say, but I don't think you're really supposed to do this. It's not really designed for that. This is the medium softness. Um, I'm on the fence about whether I would like this thickness or not. I'm gonna try it for one night and then tomorrow, I'll empty some out if I don't like it. It's different, I can feel the pillow part. I don't really feel the water so much. I think the water is underneath the pillow, so it's kind of providing like a really soft base for the pillow. The water's down, down here. I gotta put a case on here for one. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Usually I have a first impression. I don't really have an impression. It just feels like a normal pillow to me. Although when I move, I can feel that it gives a lot more than another pillow does. Yet there's still a firmness to it. It's kind of weird. It gives, but it has firmness. I'll be interested to see how this goes tonight. Speaking of, that's what I'm gonna check in next. So I'll see you tonight and we'll see how this goes. By the way, it was 99 degrees in Vegas today. This is about as many covers as I want, but oh, here we go. First night on the water pillow. Are you guys curious? I'm pretty curious. All right, well, I will check in tomorrow and let you know what my first impression is and we'll see if we wanna stay with the medium or go to soft. So good night, I'll see you then. All right, day one of my water pillow from Metaflow is over. And actually, I'm a little bit tired today because I didn't sleep that well on the water pillow. But here's my thoughts after one night's sleep. Number one, you don't hear the water when you're moving around. I mean, like, 
if I shake it, I can hear the water. But when you're laying on it, you don't hear the water at all. By the way, I did put a pillowcase on here, so don't wonder why I didn't have one on. I forgot to put on before I finished filming last night, but I did have a pillowcase on there. One thing that's also kind of strange is that when you when you shift your your weight on there, you can actually feel the water move out of the way. So you're it's different. It's a different sensation. But I think that the reason I didn't sleep so well on it is because I feel it's a medium fill. I tend to prefer the softer pillows, but I want to try the medium. I'm going to go out there and take some of the water out so it's in the soft category and try it again tonight. It's not a bad pillow. It's just a little bit different. Like I said, if I put my head on this side, I can kind of feel the volume of the pillow push that way. It's very strange. It's different. It's soft though. I just need a little bit less thickness for tonight. So let's try it tonight under the soft settings and see how that goes. The instructions don't really say how to remove water. I'm assuming it's under the same technique. But it does say if it's too firm to remove some water. Too firm, remove some water. So I'm gonna try right now. I put three liters in, I'm gonna take a liter out to make it two liters, which is what they say is the soft setting. Hopefully this works. Oh, it's working. It's working. All right, that's exactly one liter taken out. So tonight I'll try it with only two liters, which is supposed to be softer, and see how that works. All right, my second night with the water pillow was much better than the first one. I did feel like I slept better. I actually, actually slept an hour longer. My neck wasn't hurting, so the thickness of just having the two liters instead of three was definitely better for me. I was expecting that it was going to be basically water on the inside, but it's basically pillow on top and water on the bottom. The water is all right here. The pillow part's right here. The idea that having water against your head, keeping it cool, not gonna happen. It's just a regular pillow against your head. The only thing that changes is when you put your head down, it seems to displace the water, which is kind of a different sensation. I enjoyed my second night better. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna spend about another week on this before I report back and see if anything's changed. But my second night was much better than my first, but let's see how the next week goes. I'll check back then. All right, stick around for at the end for a little bit of a Q&A, and otherwise, let me wrap this thing up. Now, so as pros and cons goes, the pros would be that you can adjust this to be as thick or as firm as you want it to be. All you have to do is add water or take it out. Now, it's also a very comfortable pillow, and it also has not gotten flat over the weeks. I've had pillows get flat almost instantly in, what is it, seven, eight days I've been using this, not flat at all. Now, the cons would be that the water's down here, your head's up here. So number one, you can't flip the pillow at night. That's one con. And there is no cooling effect from the water because you have a pillow on top of it, basically. So it doesn't really stay cool like I expected it to. It's a comfortable pillow. I like it. It's probably an above average pillow. If you had problems with regular pillows, this might be something to consider because it is different. When you put your head on there and you can, it kind of moves the water around. It's a, it's a different sensation. So this might be something to consider if you've had problems with standard pillows. I'm not sure I'm going to replace the beauty rest that I use with this one. Although I might, I'm going to keep using this for a little while longer and see if I, when I go back, if I like this one better. It's up there. I'm not sure it's top tier, but it's pretty close. But if you guys used a water filled pillow, tell me what you think in the comments below. Check out my social profiles or progress pictures videos as I go. And please subscribe for more product reviews from me, James White, with Freaking Reviews. By the way, if you're still here, I've got a little bonus material for you. How about some Q&A? I posted this on my community tab on YouTube. Ask them for questions, I got a few right here. And if I didn't get to your question, I probably will in a future video. I'm kind of spacing these out. All right, so one question asked if I'd been to Canada and tried any Canadian food. Now, even before this whole pandemic started, I had three places outside the US I really wanted to visit, and that is Canada, the UK, and Japan. I'm gonna hit those places as soon as I can when this is all over. So I've not been to Canada yet, but I guarantee you I'll be probably going to Toronto as soon as I can. So this question asks, for those of us who can't get haircuts, have you ever reviewed a self-haircut device like the Flowbee? Well, I don't really have much to work with there. I don't think Brandon would let me use him as a guinea pig either, so I'm probably not going to be able to use it. I would love to have one, but it's what, 30 years old? I do have a funny story about the Flowbee though. I had a good friend in high school who went into cosmetology school right after we graduated, and that was around the time that the Flowbee came out. And as I recall the story, there was a family member that said, you should not go into cutting hair because once these devices take over, nobody's gonna need haircuts anymore. Well, I guess that didn't really pan out, did it? It's kind of like when my, my friend bought a Commodore 64 in the early 80s and said, I'll never need another computer again. Or the time that I bought a one gigabyte hard drive in the early 90s for 500 bucks. Or the time that my friend decided not to become a dentist because he was convinced 
that they had invented a chewing gum that would prevent cavities so nobody would need a dentist anymore. A question from Will Jackson. You've mentioned that you're in a band and that you're a musician. Any chance we can see a video of your talents in the musical arts? Actually, I'm not in a band at the moment because of everything going on. I'm not sure if I will be anytime soon. But you could look up the band Tomorrow's Hand on Spotify or Louder Than Light on Facebook. You might see me there. Someone asked, did you ever use the ASEAN TV George Foreman grill? How did you think it performed? I actually know the date that I bought my first George Foreman grill. It was October 3rd, 1998. The reason I remember that date is because it was the first time in about three months I left my house other than going to work because I had two very small twins at home. So I spent the, the day at the mall with them, had some photos taken, and I saw a presentation uh, on the George Foreman grill and I was hooked. And I thought it was very good. I used it for years. In fact, I think there's a new one out there. Maybe I should check that out and review it because uh, I've always had good luck with the George Foreman grills. Someone asks, when did you start going bald? This person started going bald around the age of 25. I'm pretty sure I was about 21 the first time I noticed a widow's peak happening. In fact, somewhere I have video of me looking in the mirror and saying, am I going bald? Or something like that. I mean, I should try to dig that video out because it's pretty funny. I had, I had a lot of hair back then. Look at my hair. Am I getting a widow's peak or not? I mean, look at that. That's, that is pretty bad right there. Look at that. That looks pretty thin. Okay. But I was about 21 when I started losing my hair. I didn't completely start shaving it until my mid-30s, though. Well, I guess that's it for now, so I'll probably have some more questions at the end of my next video, whenever that might be. So I appreciate you guys sticking around, and I'll see you next time.